What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. It's good to be back. I just arrived home from work, just chilling in the Prado, the daily. Today, I'm going to make a video talking about reasons why you should buy an S15, because if you haven't checked out my last video on reasons why you shouldn't buy one, you definitely should, by the way, I'm going to explain to you why you should buy one. So let's get into it. So why in this and Sylvia, you ask? Well, I'll give you a clue. Yeah. There's absolutely no denying how good these things look. They're an absolutely timeless design, which I don't think will ever get old. This car looks so good that whenever you think of a drift car, whenever you think of a Japanese sports car, it's almost always gonna be one of these. Nissan really nailed the design on these. With, I think with the S12, the S13, the 14, and now the 15. And they, they've done an excellent job with this one. So somehow Nissan has managed to make this car look not only aggressive, but sleek at the same time. We've got aggressive body lines here, sharp edges. We've got grills. We've got skinny, aggressive looking headlights here. So if you take a look back at history, you'll notice that in the early 2000s when this car was coming out, a lot of the cars that were coming out at the same time were really round, they weren't aggressive, really just looked like commuter cars. And then Nissan came along with this thing. So Nissan have managed to blend flat edges like the back of the car here, it's angular and aggressive with the streamline this, I guess you could say, of the car. We got a big body line that runs throughout the entirety of the car that follows along the rear quarter to then the door, and then it finishes off here at the front fender. And I think it really sets it off from everything else that came out at the same time. So when you have a car that looks this good, you want to make sure that it goes just as well as it looks. So this one definitely does not disappoint. It's an SR20 DET. And my one happens to be fully forged. So let's take a look. Excuse the messy interior. Like you guys saw in the previous video, this is an SR20 DET. This one just happens to be fully forged, has a high mount GT2871, and it makes almost 300 kilowatts. And I have to say that it's extremely exhilarating to drive. So people love to bag these things for sounding absolutely terrible. However, there is one thing that people cannot deny, and that's the fact that they're extremely good engines. The reason why people keep these engines in these cars and swap them into other cars is because they're really great for drifting. When you have, for instance, let's take a 1J or a 2J, they're extremely linear, whereas SR20s, they love to make bulk power in the mid-range. So that's extremely important when you're drifting, when you're tracking it, just in general. So that's what gives it the really punchy, like nimble uh, sports car feel. So SR20. The reason why these things have earned such a name for themselves is because of movies like Tokyo Drift, now the reason why so many people adore this car is because of movies such as Tokyo Drift that have shown how amazing this platform is and have basically made it iconic as a drift car. That's one of the main reasons why these things are so desirable. And as a result, these have absolutely exploded in price because everyone wants one, but basic economics, supply and demand. Now there's a saying that goes, they don't make them like they used to, and it could not be more true for cars that are made now as opposed to cars that were made 20 years ago, because this thing does not feel like anything you'll ever drive on the road these days. More and more people are craving the raw, visceral experience of an iconic, lightweight Japanese sports car like this over here. And you just don't get it these days because, because of emissions, because of safety regulations and noise regulations. And that's why you cannot beat one of these. The fact that this has no safety features like stability control, traction control, basically any airbags, it has two that probably won't do anything in a crash. 
But for some reason, people really value these things. Everything is in your hands. You are at the mercy of the car, basically. This was the first S chassis made in the 21st century. I know they started making them in Japan before the, the year 2000, however. When you sit in this thing, it doesn't immediately scream 90s. Like the, the dash is, it's really, it's really nice. Like the vents uh, look pretty futuristic. They spin, they close, you can see. And oftentimes people put vents in here. So they're actually quite functional. And the gauge costs are like, the taco is right in front of you, which is exactly what you want in a, in a sports car. You don't want to be looking over to the left, reading tiny little numbers like this. Exactly, who cares about the speed? You just want to know the revs. So the driving position is one of my favorite things in this car. Everything is extremely close to you. Like I've obviously upgraded my radio, but the radio controls are literally reachable straight from the gear knob. Same with the aircon controls. When you're looking through the windscreen, you can see your gauges really clearly. These actually came to factory with a boost gauge, which this has been swapped out for my TurboSmart eBoost. Uh, boost controller. It still retains factory boost. This is actually a factory piece right here. So Nissan Silvias came out with um, A-pillar gauge pods, which nowadays is pretty illegal because it obstructs your view in uh, in some areas. Now let's not forget the the reason why these things are so desirable. They have exploded in value in the last sort of two to three years. People want these things. They're really starting to appreciate them now after, you know, they've been crashed, they've been drifted, they've been you know, wrapped around trees. People are actually realizing that these are you know, pretty hard to come by, especially clean examples. So one of my favorite things about the Silvia, this isn't a Silvia, this is a Chaser. But one of my favorite things about the Silvia is not actually about the car, it's about owning the car. So it's the experience of actually having the car. It's just nice knowing that other people want what you have. And it's it's a weird psychological thing. It makes you feel good when you drive the car. It's more of an experience. It adds to the experience rather of owning and driving the car. Hello, my name is Rex H. And if you want to own one of these cars, you're a clout chaser. <laughs> <laughs> when you buy one of these things, you're literally just looking for people to look at you. You want to snap next, right? Well, that's not entirely the case. That's a part of owning one of these cars. They're extremely rare. A lot of people want them. And because of that, it just feels good driving it around because like no one else has one of these. So a, a few people do, but the people that do, yeah, we come together and that's what's called the community. Anyway. As Rex is rambling on there, what he's basically- I'm rambling on. Yeah, what he's basically trying to say is it really adds to the experience of owning and driving the car. When you see other people's reactions on the road to you driving it, it makes you feel good. That's why you should buy Sylvia because everyone needs to experience that feeling. So hopefully this video was informative enough for you guys to know why you should definitely buy Sylvia. And I just want to say a massive thank you for all the support in the last video. I got a bunch of comments. I responded to every single one. Yeah, thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for many more to come.